What up, folks? Boston Black, popsauce.com. Now it's time for our second entry into our pure pepper line or the beginning of our pure pepper line. This ferment we are calling the heat or bring the heat. It is comprised of pretty and sweet peppers, New Mex Twilights, cayenne oranges, Marachi hybrids, yellow scotch bonnets, orange scotch bonnets, chocolate bootless, Carolina reapers, chocolate reapers, primo reapers, peach scorpions, fat white scorpions, Trinidad scorpion sweets, seven pot reds, red ghost peppers, orange ghost peppers, yellow ghost peppers, and white ghost peppers. And we're finished the ferment off with our seasoning pack. Now we're gonna take this, combine some vinegar and brine, and that's it. That's the whole essence of our pure pepper line that it is nothing but 100% organic peppers. We're gonna set up everything, get right at it. Be back with you in a second. Okay, the first step in our process is to separate the brine from the pepper ingredients or our peppers. We open up our ferment and begin that by appreciating it and what we smell. The aroma hits me pretty much immediately. First thing I notice is a thin layer of cam yeast. on top of my weight and um, and the bag that I use to weigh everything down. Interesting. So we wanna remove the weight and my bag and it reveals peppers that are just looking gorgeous. The smell is phenomenal. Perfect. Okay, now that I have this, I want to go ahead and begin the separation process. Just like the last one, my brand is going to be very little because it, it, when I pack this pure pepper line, the peppers just seem to hold everything. I'm packing the, 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 the ferment so tight that all I got is peppers. So in the future, I think I'm gonna just reduce the weight of this particular line. But I also, I mean, look at it. Just thick. Okay, now that we've gotten our peppers actually separated from the brine, we're going to actually break it down in two parts because we just got so many peppers in this ferment. It's ridiculous. So I'm noticing that I'm just put, I'm packing it too tight. And although I think I like the outcome of it, it's an inconvenience when it comes to me actually making the sauce. So when I do the pure pepper line, I'm not going to pack it for the weight I normally pack the, um, the, the gallon size container for because it's just too many peppers. But anyway, we're going to break down the first half and then we're going to come back and break down. We're going to just add it in here to continue to break down from there. But but right now it's just too many peppers. Look at this, it's ridiculous. Oh, 
Okay. Now basically you can see that I've ended up with basically a pepper mashup. And what I want to do is get a measurement on my actual brine and then I'm going to add that to it. And we measure our brand because we want to know exactly how much brand we ended up with. Just basically a cup and a half. So we'll add this cup and a half of brand to our mix and then bring it down some. Okay, now we're just going to take the second part, the, I mean, this the entire first mix, and we're going to go ahead and start our second part blending process right now. Normally, I add my vinegar or whatever, or I, at least I add part of my vinegar here, but we're just so full that it don't make sense to. So instead of me trying to add my vinegar now, I'm just going to go ahead and start my second process and then we'll add the vinegar there. Okay, now we are going, what we ended up with was three and a half liters. So basically we want to take a liter and three quarters and place it inside of our blender. Yeah, we're going to have to do it in three parts. So, we're just going to go with a little more than a liter into this, into my blender, for the simple fact that my blender is only 1800 milligrams max. So we got it to almost 1200 I'm going to take it to 1200 So we took it to 1200 and we left it we're left with a little bit over 2 liters of our mash start the blending process with basically 1200 milliliters of our mash. Okay, we did two minutes on high blend or two minutes on 10 with just our mash. Now we're going to add a half a cup of white balsamic. Take that back. We're going to add six ounces of white balsamic. Yeah. And then we're going to add. Two ounces of white, just regular um, white vinegar. We're going to start it with that.
Okay, our blend stopped. So we want to look at the consistency of it and make a determination whether we're going to add more vinegar or not. We're going to have to add more vinegar because it's just too thick. Okay, at this point, we've added six ounces of white balsamic and two ounces of white. We're going to increase to another six ounces of white because it's just too thick. No. We're going to go six ounces of our infused balsamic it's a lot of balsamic but we're looking for something bold so yeah we're going to go six ounces of our infused balsamic which means i'm gonna have to make some more that's what we're gonna do Okay, let me make sure I said that correctly. We're going another six ounces of infused white balsamic vinegar. And that's something that we make and we'll have to make more because we're running low. But that's what we're gonna go with. I think that's going to bring us down to consistency. Okay, by the sound of the blend, it appears we are near the consistency we want to be at. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add my xanthan gum now. Normally I do a half a teaspoon of xanthan gum, but because... And I'm going to do a half a teaspoon right now. We use xanthan gum to help reduce the possibility of separation after we bottle. Now that our blend has come to a stop, we're going to recheck the consistency and also check the pH balance of our sauce. And then we're going to give it a taste. At first glance, consistently consistency looks good a pH reads 4.0 Anything below 4.5 is shelf stable according to the FDA. Okay, now we want to taste it. It's 
still a little thick. You know what? No. What we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add four more ounces of white. Okay, now we're going to try that. That's better. That's better. That's what we wanted. Now to give it a taste. Just bring the heat. He's there. Taste is there. He comes right at you. And totally attacks your tongue. Hits the roof of your mouth. And then just lingers. The build of intensity is so gradual. that you completely know it's there. Or you know that it's occurring, but you don't feel the need to do anything about it. You ever heard the reference of the frog in a pot of water? It slowly come to a boil, the frog won't even know. The heat is slowly building because I can feel it around the tip of my tongue. It's just like, but it is not making me want to run or jump. Which makes it really bearable. But you know it's there because your mouth is constantly producing saliva to try to contain it. Flavor. It's a cross between tangy. And I'm getting this sweetness, I'm, I can only assume that's coming from the pretty and sweets and the, that Trinidad, that sweet that they talk about with the Trinidad scorpion. Also feel it warming all the way down my esophagus. 
but it's not crazy, crazy, crazy hot. Just perfect. <clears throat> anyway, we're gonna move the process forward. We are going to start the pasteurization process. Bring the temperature up to 165 degrees. I mean, my mouth is really, really watery. I can't even, I'm, I'm good. talking is difficult. Anyway, we're gonna bring the temperature up to 165 degrees. And, um, to stop the pat, to stop the fermenting process. And then, uh, We'll proceed with the bottle. We'll do that now. Okay. Our blender is reading 165 degrees, but we're going to check it with our hand thermometer just to be on the safe side. Hundred sixty five degrees. Now we'll stop the pasteurizing process, give it a blend one more time, and then we'll bottle. Okay, when it comes to bottling, our process is simple. First, we dump our sauce into something that's lighter because the glass the blender container is generally heavier Woo! than uh we want to handle If you have an additional blends that you have to make, you want to go ahead and put your sauce inside of your blender now because you don't want your the residue to dry up on your blender. If you follow what I'm saying. So if you have additional mash, you want to go ahead, find your measuring place where you want it. this circumstance I want 1200 8 10 12 and then you want to go ahead and fill it up to there so that the residue does not dry on the bottom of your blender now I take a bottle. Everything's been cleaned and sanitized before we even begin. Bottles, caps, orifices, everything. U utensils, everything. Implements, everything. Then I want to place my funnel inside of my bottle. On my measuring cup, I got five and a half ounces marked on my measuring cup. These bottles are basically between five and a half and six ounces. And you want to fill them up to the top while your sauce is hot. As when it cools, it will reduce. So this process is as simple as pouring to your mark, raising the funnel high enough to allow air to escape and then pouring your sauce into the bottom no fuss no mess nice and quick again to the mark
funnel out of the bottle enough to leave an air gap. Sauce in the bottle. Okay, once your bottles are filled, you want to take your orifice. Hang on, before you even do that, you want to take a paper towel. <clears throat> and go over your bottles move into a clean part of the paper towel every time you wipe the, another bottle's thread okay now you just want to take your orifices and just snap them onto your bottles After that, I'm going to take your bottle caps, just screw them on your bottles. There you have it, folks. Pop sauce sauces, bringing the heat. Thank you for joining me. Peace.